Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is looking at those people who have their natal moon in conjunction, squaring, or opposing Venus. And I want to give a shout out to the astrologyplacemembership.com where I am just uh, pulling up what they have here so that I have something to go on. And I'm going to paraphrase things, but of course, as always, this is my uh, take on it, so they may uh, be uh, intending for a different interpretation, So, but I'm just getting it from, from uh, them. And um, so what we can, we can say, they, they are lumping together the conjunction with the square and the opposition. Now we know that the square and opposition are for sure challenging aspects. In astrology, but the conjunction I read somewhere can either be more of a positive thing, more of a challenging thing, or neutral, meaning that it really doesn't have a, a positive or negative charge in particular. Like it kind of is just, it just is, which seems a little bit funny because um, usually, like a conjunction is going to strengthen or intensify the contact of those uh, two planets. So with the, the conjunction, the same themes arise from, I mean, gosh, I didn't even like actually read this uh, thoroughly. I skimmed like in two minutes. So I just want to see if there was enough stuff to talk about. But um, so you could, you could look at the conjunction as someone who has the moon in uh, Libra, for instance, or, you know, Taurus, those are... That's the other sign that is ruled by um, Venus. And this is because the moon and Venus are both connected to relationships. Uh, the moon being the emotional, uh, you know, source of things. This is going to be a person who uh, has a, um, a need for love in their life, to have um, relationships with other people that are harmonious. And the, the issue around this is that some people, you know, want something, but some people need it. And I think that when the moon is here, it's like a, a dependency on that. And the problem with that is we can't control other people. And so they're going to do what they want to do. And we're going to have to just accept whatever that is. Yes, we can, you know, complain when they're not doing what we want them to do. And maybe they may adjust their behavior. Maybe they won't. Uh, whatever. There can be this feeling with this combination with the contact, whether it's the, the conjunction or the hard angles, that this is something that I have to have. Or else I'm not going to feel emotionally secure. So the, the upshot in that is that this person will have a tendency towards codependency because they're going to try to ensure that they get their needs met emotionally from somebody else. And this can be the aspect of the people pleaser. Now, I would say that you would have to look at what, like for instance, with the um, conjunction, what two planets are involved? I mean, two signs. If it's Libra, then you've got a doozy or Pisces. If it's Aries, the person might bristle at the thought of somebody not giving them what they want. But I mean, it's more like of an aggressive thing. They, they may not um, feel that vulnerability to the same degree as another sign might feel, all the water signs. But I, I do think that, for instance, Scorpio, because Scorpio is very secretive, and so somebody with the moon in Scorpio is going to be very secretive, they're not going to necessarily 
um, share that with somebody else because that would make them vulnerable and they want to seem invulnerable. So that can be problematic too, because that person, um, has this dependency, but they can't really do much with it. Um, and I'm just speculating. I don't know if that plays out in every single case when somebody has the moon in Scorpio, but anyway, let's say that the person has a square. How can that, um, well, before I, I get to that, I wanted to talk about some other, um, things that can go on here is that the, I think that they're mentioning this as if this is true for everyone. I think this is especially true for the conjunction, but it probably will be a theme for even the hard angles is that, um, this is a, um, a combination of somebody because, and this is, I think, especially, um, that sub influence of Libra that does not like to, to witness rudeness, um, coarse behavior, vulgar behavior. Um, and they, you know, this can probably affect you very emotionally if you witness some sort of injustice because this, because this would be like somebody who has the moon in Libra as well as, um, Venus in Libra and that idea of, uh, fair play and things like that. And so because the moon is emotional, it gets emotionally stirred up by these kinds of things that they, per that you perceive as being, um, injustices as well as recoils, um, at the kind of, uh, vulgar behavior that some people engage in, or if somebody's being rude, if you see someone being rude to somebody else, that can really like sock you in the gut in a sense. I mean, emotionally, you may feel that because you're like, um, that's just plain ugliness. I want to live in a world that is beautiful. Uh, remember that Libra is ruled by, that's the Venus angle that wants that harmony in life itself, not just in personal life, but in life itself. So, um, there is the, the, um, the love of social events parties and the like, you may be very, uh, uh, attracted to that kind of lifestyle. And this is very interesting. If for instance, your son is in the 12th house or in a very, um, kind of a shyer sign, or you have a rising sign that's very, uh, nondescript, like, uh, cancer and, uh, and, um, Virgo or something that is more introverted, less kind of, um, interested in these kinds of, uh, gatherings and stuff like that. I'm talking about like a bigger gathering, not just like small group of friends that you know very well or family members, but some, you know, these, these events and things like that. Now it's important to note that sometimes people may be motivated with this combination and it can be the hard angles too, I guess, from, from, it doesn't seem to differentiate between this, but there can be this need for, um, being popular, being perceived as being in social demand. So I would say, especially if there is, um, hard angles, that it's a negative motivation, in other words. So it's coming from some sort of emotional insecurity that the person needs to prove to themselves that they have um, these social contacts. And it, I, there's a term, I don't know if it's correct, like the social friend collector or social collector, I don't know, um, something like that. And you know that there are people out there, maybe you're one of them, who just always, um, collects more and more people. You know, you see that on fa Facebook when people have all these 
friends. You know, you have to make a friend's request and you have to agree to it. So there are some people that are willing to agree to 5,000 friends and they don't probably know all those people, but they just, that mentality that wants that. And it's not really a mentality, obviously it's an emotional desire. And, um, so one of the things that they do talk about is that if there is a challenge between challenging aspects, so we're talking again about the squares and um, oppositions between the moon and Venus, that the person can have two sides to their nature and one can be very, it's almost like Cancerian. They mention the term maternal and, and nurturing. That's what I associate with with a cancer. Oh yeah, duh. Cause the moon is related to cancer. But then they said, uh, I'll just tell you the, the adjectives they used erotic, flirtatious, tempestuous to describe the, I guess the Venus side. Um, I wouldn't necessarily characterize Venus that way. Um, even eroticism, it seems to me that would be more Mars, but maybe not. Maybe it's more subtle and Mars is just complete unbridled lust who knows but yeah flirtatious definitely tempestuous i don't know about that uh maybe because it's forming a hard angle to the moon so it brings out the drama and they said it can even uh um you know create um somebody who wants to have affairs and goes outside of the marriage or what have you, you know, they said the family unit, but you know, I'm assuming they mean marriage or the, the, the partnership. And, um, if you think about it, when people do cheat, sometimes it's because they feel this emotional vacuum within their um, re relationship with their significant other. And in some cases there might be some case for them to feel that way. But in some cases people do cheat because of their own insecurities and they want to feel that sense of somebody giving them their full attention and truly really cherishing them. And, um, that to me is when the person needs that admiration and that, kind of, um, or even just the, the love of, of love and kind of getting that fix of that thrill of, of what do you call that? Um, infatuation. So maybe this combination, especially the hard angle, but even the conjunction could be one of those types of people that really is addicted to infatuation, the infatuation phase. And once that wears that wears out, they may, um, go searching for it somewhere else. Now they may not cheat. They may actually just break off the relationship, but they're still going from one thing to the next. So, um, I think especially if your moon and, um, Venus are in Aries, or even like, I would say, especially like Aries, because they're already known for that. Um, like Venus and Aries can go from one thing to the next, because they're looking for that initial phase, you know, Aries is the initiator. So, um, and, and looking for that novelty of the new experience. So yeah, I could see, especially with the hard angles that that would be a challenging thing. Now they also talk about, um, having the, the, the hard angles, having the tendency to feel a sense of being unloved. And actually I have found that the square is a, um, particular aspect where the person may find it hard to receive and give love. And they mentioned earlier in life, but they said that there has to be, um, some of the, they, they call it heavier planets. You could say the malefics, you know, like, 
uh, Saturn and Mars and all of that, that are kind of, you know, also in the charts causing, you know, showing signs that there are things that have created, you know, whatever traumas or, you know, abandonment, whatever. And I feel like this is something that I don't know about like with the opposition, it to me, because oppositions are supposed to be projections. So the person is constantly looking for another person maybe to provide them with what, what they're looking, especially if they are, um, trying to give that person all this affection, but it may be, who knows, like overdoing it sometimes. And maybe it, the person doesn't know quite how to, how to like interact with somebody romantically. They go from one extreme to the other. They're overdoing it emotionally. And then they pull back again, especially, I think, especially if the other person doesn't react in the right way, then they may, it's like blowing hot and cold. But with the square, I feel like there is a, an emotional blockage that prevents them from being loved, but they may not feel loved either. So it's like kind of a vicious circle. And in that case, I feel like trauma definitely could be at play because they uh, are afraid of something happening again, of that person dying or leaving, uh, you know, cheating. So they, even if a person professes love to them, they may feel indifferent towards it. It, it can't sink in. It can't penetrate. Um, there can be a lot of romance with these combinations. Um, and there can be jealousy that with the hard, uh, angles, there can be um, a tendency to, to, for, for them to easily fall in love. And then of course there's the jealousy that goes along with that because the person is trying to protect their, you could say their property <laughs> because, uh, you know, since, uh, Venus is involved, uh, Taurus is one of the signs ruled by Venus and is, um, the ruler of the second house. And part of that is possessions and Taurus is known for being possessive. So even though Venus, the planet is represented here, you can look at some of the, um, the connections to Taurus with how this would play out. Now it's, it's very interesting because when I've noticed this, when I've been doing these, these types of, uh, aspects readings, because even with the hard angles, they just call them contacts, meaning that as long as the two planets are contacting one another, they're going to produce certain results. And even the hard angles can have some good qualities because by virtue of even contacting that other planet, they still have some of those same things going on. So in this case, it can have to do with artistic sensibilities. Um, and whether the person is an outright good artist where they have like good, good ability, artistic abilities, or they just have the sensibilities, meaning they understand the harmony, maybe color, and, um, the, they mentioned here like interior design design. Um, but just the, the idea of what colors go together, what, um, maybe if it was interior design, what fabrics, the textures, the, you know, those kinds of things. And we know that there are some people in the world who naturally possess these kinds of, um, abilities and some people that they are very tacky in how they, they put things together, the colors that they, that they choose or something. And some people are very, 
very um, um, tasteful in their in in what they choose. You know, right down to the you know the furniture and the 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 rugs and everything. And another thing that this would uh, represent, these are both feminine planets, the moon and Venus. So that can be uh, people, important people in the life of this individual, whether you are a male or a female. If you're a male, you may, uh, you know, see women in your life as being very important to your life. It doesn't just have to be the mother. It can be um, your sister or it can be an aunt or they mentioned even daughters. But um, and, and, and this can also relate to having getting some kind of, um, I would say money, they, they say benefits. So benefits meaning, you know, some, something good coming out of that, but I would say even financially benefiting because, um, Venus can be about money. Another thing they mentioned is self-indulgence and they had to bring up, um, sweet sweets. Okay. And I was thinking, hey, why don't, you know, why don't they pick on protein or something? But it's, I think that Venus is associated with candy and sweet things. Um, I'll read the exact sentence. They said, it is the Venusian thing she craves. Clothing, sweets, music, arts, art, flowers, jewelry, and beautiful things. And then they also mentioned that that can uh, put a crimp on the finances because obviously you might be spending major bank if you are um, indulging in all these nice things right bling <laughs> you know the jewelry but the music and all of that stuff and um so so th so there could be financial issues sometimes because of the indulgent nature i would say especially when, well, maybe it's also the conjunction, but I would think the hard angles would be the most challenged with this. But um, yeah, maybe even the conjunction, because they talk about when the person is feeling emotionally um, imbalanced or whatever, that that's when it, or insecure, that that might be when they start to like the retail therapy, you know, that kind of thing, or eating something that like comfort food that makes a person feel better. I mean, they think it's going to make themselves feel better. Um, they mentioned, um, gift giving that you like it that you like to give gifts and you also like to get gifts, but they also mention the idea of, um, wanting financial security. I don't know what they mean. They, they say here, they may try to attract physical security and possess a strong desire to be loved and protected from poverty. But to me, um, I don't know what they mean by physical security. Maybe they're just talking about uh, financial security. And um, and that that one thing about that is I think that um, with the conjunction, it's like if you have money in the bank, you're all good. You know, if you have that sense of cu of, of a cushion, you're all good. Um, Uh, Ayn Rand, who wrote The Fountainhead and uh, Atlas Shrugged and is now being accused of being, you know, the darling of libertarians and uh, right wingers and all that stuff. She she has a quote where she s said that she had a Buddhistic sense of calm when she had money in the bank. And she came from communist Russia and her family was wealthy and they, they got... Um, 
you know, screwed over by the government and they lost all of, you know, they had all their wealth stolen by the government. So that's where she was informed to, to, you know, cultivate that belief system regarding money. I mean, that, that, that was a trauma that she had to, to endure, but that, that kind of thing is definitely what this combination really uh, suggests to me is that, uh, it's kind of like if you have the moon in the second house, which is Taurus's house, um, that's a house ruled by Venus. It can, it can make the person like emotionally, um, dependent on the state of their finances. If their finances are not so hot, then they might be a little bit on edge and then feel a lot better when they have money in the bank. Okay. That's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.